we're finishing the, uh, our series on the Holy Spirit um, this morning. We're going to be talking about the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. First, I just want to remind you, um, as, we, as Deb mentioned earlier in the announcements, um, Pastor Chuck's memorial service is going to be next Sunday uh, evening afternoon from 5 to 8 o'clock. If you want to try to get in, it's at the Honda Center, um, but you may want to camp out probably Saturday morning on. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to get everybody in there personally. Um, but no worries, because we've signed up to be one of the sites to do a, a, bra- a webcast, and so you can come here, and we're going to have it all set up. So from 5 to 8 next Sunday, um, we'll be in here. Though i got to tell you, I won't be here because they gave me special pastor passes. So, so I actually get in the door. So I just don't want you to be as like, well, how come he got in? Well, sorry, I got connections. Um, a week from Thursday is what some people call Halloween, October 31st. Here's a little reminder. Yeah, I bring my son to this every year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I bring my daughter, too. I'm, you know, I'm just glad that I don't have to do it alone this year, you know? Heard that. Hey, well, just get in and out, in and out. Yeah, yeah. No big deal. Yeah. 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 You know, all across the country at churches, men are doing this. Oh, yeah, what do they call them, like trunk or treat? A harvest party. Fall festival. A Holy Ghost weenie rose. Really? Oh, it exists. All right, enough talk. I'm ready to go get my candy on, are you? I was born ready. <laughs> Race you to the moonwalk. Oh, I'll moonwalk you to the moonwalk. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my kid. Oh. Yep. Okay, that's okay. Bye, baby. Okay. All right. Daddy's that's careful. Right. Yeah, come on, buddy. Okay, do this. You ready? <laughs> 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 Now, the skid guys aren't going to be there, but that's okay. We can be there. And uh, Joy is planning a big time. Um, I mean, it's going to be awesome this year. Oh, my gosh. Not only are we doing the, the, the game booths and giving out little prizes and stuff to the kids, and there's music, and there's all the food, which is all that's free, and there will be the bounce houses. This year, she's even bringing in a petting zoo for the kids. And, uh, and then it all winds up in here in the sanctuary. We bring everybody in here and we share the gospel with the kids and every, all the kids leave with a big old bag of candy. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's a week from Thursday. It's free. Invite your friends. It's open to the neighborhood. Whoever wants to come, it's open. So that's a week from Thursday. Now, as we get into talking about the Holy Spirit, um, in telling good guys from bad guys, Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits. We're going to wrap up our talk on the Holy Spirit by doing a little fruit inspection, if you will. We want to, we want to be talk, talking, thinking about the kinds of things that the Holy Spirit produces in our lives. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 5. So if you want to turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, We're going to start in verse 16, and we're going to go through verses 23, Galatians chapter 5. Paul says this, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, through this passage, you're going to see two terms contrasted over and over again. You're going to see the word spirit, and you're going to see the word flesh. Let me define these just a little bit. When he's talking about the Spirit in this text, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Before you were born again, the Bible says we were all spiritually dead. We're told that we were all dead in our trespasses and sins. 
But when we ask God into our lives, when we ask Jesus for help, when we opened up our hearts to him, that's how we became born again, by, by reaching out and saying, God, I need help. And when that happened, God put in you his Holy Spirit. Um, he will talk about flesh. What we define flesh as, it's our sin nature, my sin nature. It is that part of me that loves to do wrong. Oh, not me. I never love to do wrong. Oh, yes, you do. Don't you know it? Sin is lots of fun, isn't it? This is church. Should I say it? What should I say? I don't know. Honey, what should I say? Is, is it okay to say if sin is fun? Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Sin's a lot of fun. Until you do it, man, are, man, are you messed up afterwards, right? Of course sin is a lot of fun. That's why we do it all the time. There's a part of you that loves to sin. And I got news for you, it never goes away. Not until you go to be with Jesus. Not until you die. It's like it's stitched inside of this flesh. It's with you. Some people will tell you that, that they've learned to become sinless. They no longer sin. And you can tell right off the bat that they just, they just lied, because they just lied. <laughs> Everybody sins. Hopefully, as we're growing in the Lord, we will learn to sin less but none of us will become sinless. So these two things, are we're going to see through this passage. And when, when, when you are born again, you have the Spirit in you, but you still have your flesh. It's said in verse 17, the flesh lusts against the Spirit. And what he's doing is he's describing an internal battle that takes place in each of us. A battle kind of like this. It is useless to resist. Don't let yourself be destroyed as Obi-Wan did. There is no escape. Don't make me destroy you. Yet realize your importance. You have only begun to discover your power. Join me, and I will complete your training. With our combined strength, we can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. I'll never join you! If you only knew the power of the dark side, Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. That's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Now, i got to tell you, George Lucas didn't have all his theology right, but that's not the point. There's a lot of truth in there. Um, you don't yet know the power of the dark side. Well, yeah, it's pretty strong, isn't it? And it's not just out there, friends. It's in, it's in you. It's in your heart. It's in, it's in your flesh. We all have it. And the struggle with us isn't with our father. I am your father. It's not with our Father, it's with ourselves. It's a struggle in each of us. Paul describes it this way, I want to do what is good, but I don't. 
I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. It's a battle every one of us faces. Paul gives us an incredible promise in verse 16. If you have a paper Bible, this ought to be highlighted or underlined in your Bible. Verse 16. If you don't have a paper Bible, figure out how to put highlights into your little iPad thingy dingy and and do something to remember this. Verse 16 is huge. It's an important, it's a key verse in your walk with the Lord. Paul says, if you walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let me unpack a few of these words here. The word to walk is what, what we call an imperative, which means it's a command. And it's something that you have the obligation to obey. Or you might not obey it. But it's a command. It's out there. God says, I want you to do this. I want you to walk in the Spirit. It is also what we call in the present tense, which in Greek means continuous action. You and I are commanded to continually walk in the Spirit. And Paul is promising that if you will learn to walk in the Spirit, you will not do what the flesh wants. In fact, he, 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 he says it in an emphatic way. It's, in the Greek, it's a double negative. But what it means is this. You will absolutely not fulfill the desire of the flesh. If you walk in the Spirit, you, you won't do what the flesh wants. Now, let's talk, up, let's, let's talk about some of this. What does it mean to walk? I have got some brilliant ideas here for you, so pay attention, take notes. Here's, 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 here's what walking is all about. First, I take a step. Then I take another step. And then I take another step, and another step, and another step, and another step, and another step. Taking one step isn't walking, but taking lots of steps is walking. I, I got to tell you, I know some people have trouble with 12-step with programs, but I got to tell you, there's, there's a lot of value in some of that stuff. I understand the concept of what people talk about when they talk about it's a one-step program. I, I get that. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate the heart behind it. But gang, God wants you to learn to take many steps and to keep stepping, to keep walking. Taking steps are about making choices. You and I are faced with the command by God to walk in the Spirit. That's a choice we make. We either obey it or we don't. We either do what God says or we rebel against what God says. If I'm walking in spirit, what does it mean to walk in the spirit? It involves his presence. His presence is all around me. I am in the spirit. So it can carry the idea that I am I'm, I'm walking and I'm in the spirit, like I'm in a bubble of the spirit. It's, it might c- contain the idea of I'm walking in the path of the Spirit. The Spirit has directions. He's got a path He wants me to take, and I'm walking in His path, in the Spirit's path. It could also speak of the Spirit's power, because walking in the Spirit can carry the idea that you can translate it walking by the Spirit or walking by means of the Spirit, or I'm allowing the Spirit to help me walk. We've talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we've, we've, one of my favorite words to, to attach to that is the idea of yielding to the Spirit, letting Him work, yielding to the Spirit. Well, walking in the Spirit. See, every time I yield to the Spirit, I'm just taking a step. Some of you have taken some of these steps over the last few weeks. And as we've encouraged you and nudged you along, you've you've opened yourself up a little bit to what the Spirit wants to do and you've taken the steps. My friends, that's just a step. I commend you on your steps. That's good that you're taking steps. But Paul promises if you walk, step, step, 
step. Should I moonwalk a little bit? I don't know how to moonwalk. Well, that's walking backwards anyway. I want to walk forwards. I walk in the Spirit. It's about taking steps. One choice after another. Now, walk, this next section I'm calling it walking lessons. And as I was thinking about this passage this morning, I began to realize that I actually know a little bit about walking. Um, a little bit, only a little bit. Um, for the last year and a half or so, for the sake of my health, because my health was really in the toilet. I mean, I was like really in bad shape uh, a couple years ago. And, um, and so one of the things I'm, I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a little bit of exercise in my life. So I've been, I'm learning about walking and stuff. And as I got to thinking about that, I was thinking, because it's dawned on me on one of my walks, and I, I was thinking, you know what, I actually know a little bit about walking, don't I? I'm learning about walking. Here's lesson number one. It gets easier. Now, um, some of you know, a couple years ago, I had this thing where I landed in the hospital and was there for a, you know, a couple of days, and and uh, that was like at the bottom of my health. And um, and afterward, I got out and 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 I remember uh, I remember once Deb and I were trying. We thought we would be I would be brave and try to walk to Polly's from her house, which is about like a half a mile, and it's downhill. And, and uh, uh, but man, oh man, was I winded. Just walking a couple of blocks, I was so winded. Coming back, my heart started pounding. We had to stop, I think twice. We had to stop because my heart, you could, it just like was, it was going wild. It was just terrible because I'm in such bad shape. But that was then. Um, I walk now three to four miles a day. And I don't get winded. I, I walk at a pretty good clip. I even walk up Acacia Hill and back. I, 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 I'm not bragging. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Come on, give me some attaboys. Attaboy, good job. No, it's not so good job. Listen, listen. It may be difficult to yield at the, to the Holy Spirit at first. And you may feel like you're getting winded at times and you don't know that you can keep, up, keep this up. But friends, keep at it. Stretch yourself. You can. You indeed can walk in the Holy Spirit. Second lesson, I call it every day. For me and the sake of my health, I've just decided I'm going to be stubborn and I'm going to walk every day. I rarely take a day off. I think, I think in the last year and a half or so, I, I maybe have missed uh, a day or two. Even when we went to Russia, I was, I was out walking. You know, I, 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 tried to, I tried to do this every day. Um, and sometimes when I walk, it's dark outside because of the stupid time things, you know. I, gosh, now the sun doesn't come up to like 6.30 or so, and so if you, get up, if you get up too early, it's still dark outside. Sometimes when I walk, I tell you, it's beautiful outside. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes it's absolutely gorgeous. Sometimes I, I see awesome views, you know. Sometimes I, I get to watch the sunrise, and it is glorious. It is like, woohoo! I'm so glad I'm walking. But sometimes, friends, it is cold and rainy. And I don't stop walking. I still walk. I've figured out how to bundle up or take an umbrella or, or whatever to just do what I can so I can walk. I still walk. Paul is talking about walking continually in the Spirit. It's about every day, friends. It's not just about once a week. It's not just about making a commitment on a Sunday. It's about every day, and I walk. Third lesson I want to call, stay on the path. One of the places I like to walk is up at Panorama Park. I, I do that most days. Uh, um, it's up on top of Acacia Hill. It's a rare place in Fullerton where the tra they've got a trail that goes through some natural brush. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. And, and, um, and I, can, I, I could tell that some people like to go off, off the trail. There's this one spot, there's one of the, one of the loops where uh, people have, they've created their own path. And so a couple months ago, some of the park rangers dumped a bunch of logs here and tried to, you know, say, stay off of this. Come on, you're, you're messing with everything. You're going to ruin the whole thing. They even posted a sign. This is a boundary. It's, just stop it. You know what the people did? You can, you can barely see it here. They went around it anyway. <laughs> and I got to tell you, if you walk off the path, it does get prickly. 
It gets messy. You know what, friends? It's much better to stay on the path. There's plenty to see on the path. Sometimes, as you're up at Panorama Park, there's actually more than one path you can take. Sometimes there's a fork in the road. And some of us worry so much about which direction should I go in my life. Friend, if, it, if they're both on the path, probably doesn't make too much of a difference. Because it's all good as long as you stay on the path. If, if you're walking by the Spirit and doing what, what kinds of things that please the Lord, maybe it doesn't always make a difference whether you go left or right. I'll tell you, if you go to the left, here there's the highest points, a beautiful lookout, but if you go this way, there's another cool lookout that looks out a whole different direction. That's all kind of good stuff. It's all good. Also learned a little bit about the fellow walkers. Over the last year and a half, I've begun to realize that I'm not the only one out walking. Now, that's not. Now that's, a, that's one of Fullerton's coyotes. There's a, there's a family of them that live up in the hills. And there are other people on the trail. I tried to, get, I tried to find pictures of people that, that I know that walk, but I forgot, realized I don't take their pictures, which is probably, they're probably thanking me for that. Um, but there are other people on the trail, and there's about... There's about a half a dozen people who walk on the same streets that I walk, and they, they walk just about every day as well. How do I know? Because I see them on the path pretty regularly. Even though I walk at different times during the week, now I don't walk at the exact same time every day. I walk at different times, but I will see these people. These are people over the last year and a half that I see probably three times a week. There are lots of people who are occasional walkers, They'll show up on holidays. Um, Saturday is a good day. People go walking. The occasional walkers will show up on a Saturday or a Sunday. But it's the daily walkers that I like. I've got the most in common with them. We smile at each other. That's the, the occasional walkers, they, just, they won't even look at you when you walk by. They don't, they don't get it. But the, the daily walkers, we all wave at each other. I know some of their names because we've stopped and talked. Uh, one couple walks their dog. I love them to pieces. He's an old retired pastor. It was, so, it was such a hoot to find this out. Oh, I love him to pieces. He's, he was going he was gonna fill somebody's pulpit today in preaching. I hope he does, does well. And they walk their little dog and they go up to Panorama Park and they take plastic bags and they pick up all the trash. Awesome people. Um, Another fellow, who, he's retired from the FAA, and if you know my, me and my family, my dad was, was big time airplanes. And, uh, and so we talk, we have lots to talk about. And his wife is from Hungary. Um, and so we've got even more stuff to talk about. It's wonderful, I love him to pieces. Another fellow, he's, he's hilarious, big tall guy, and he walks backwards. I don't know, I don't get that. If some of you know why people do that, it just it cracks me up. But sometimes I see him coming at me and, I, and I'm, and I'm Sometimes I'm, I'm staring, at my, cause I, I, I'm staring at my phone because I'm going through my prayer list and I almost bump into him and he almost bumps into me because we don't even see each other. It's just hilarious. But I, I just love these people. Biggest smiles. Some people I don't see them, but I know they're there because you see their footprints. People who have gone before you, traveled the path before you. You see lots of footprints. My friend, if you choose to walk in the Spirit, you will find that there are plenty of people who won't walk at all. And you'll find that there are people who are the occasional people. But you will also find that you are not the only one who is walking in the Spirit every day. They're out there. They're out there. And oh my, will you have a lot in common with them. They're out there. And you'll find them because you'll run into them. Because they're doing what you do. And, every, and maybe a couple times a week you'll bump into them. It's good to not be alone. It's good to know that there's other people doing what I'm doing. How, how can I know if I'm walking in a spirit? Well, let's look on in verse 19. He's going to contrast the flesh and the spirit. So you'll have an idea of whether you're walking in the spirit or not. Okay? So we're going to go through a list of things that describe the flesh, and we'll go through a list of things that describe the spirit. And you'll get a feel of which, what you're spending your time on, which, ones, which sounds more like you the flesh or the spirit. Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, 
heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, he talks about here the works of the flesh. And, and you know what? When I get off of the path, you're going to see some things happening. And that's what you're going to see happening, these works of the flesh. It says these works of the flesh are evident. The Greek word means apparent, manifest, plainly recognized. You'll see it in your life, especially as we go through this list. You'll know if you're off the path. And you know what? hate to say it, but probably the people closest to you will see it as well. If I could interview the people that are closest to you, they know whether you're on the path or not because it's, it's evident. It's obvious. Now, Paul's list falls into, two, into four groups. The first group we're going to call the sensual things. Um, the first word is, is adultery. It means adultery. Adultery is having sex with someone who is not your spouse or having sex with someone else's spouse. It's about breaking the marriage bond. Jesus said that if you just look on a woman and lust after her, you, you've committed adultery, so it's probably not as hard to do as we think. Second word is fornication. The Greek word is pornea. We could call it illicit sexual intercourse. It's a much broader word than adultery. It actually includes adultery, but it's way bigger than adultery. We could say that it includes any kind of sex outside of marriage. It uh, could be having sex with someone who's not your spouse, so, uh, someone before you even get married. That's, that's fornication. I kind of think, friends, that it includes pornography. I am, I am greatly concerned about the explosion of pornography in the last 10, 15 years that's available on the Internet. It can be access, accessed anywhere, by anyone, at any time. You can get it on your phone, you can get it on your computer, on your tablet, anywhere. You walk into an internet cafe, you can, you can do it in your den, you do it in your bedroom, anywhere. I am also concerned about our kids getting access to pornography. And you can pretend that it's not happening but my friend, if you are not doing something to prevent it, it is happening. It is happening. Kids as, as young as seven, they'll hear a word from their friends. And they won't ask you what that word means. They don't even ask their friends what it means. They can Google it, just like anyone else. And they will be shown pictures that you would shudder at. Pornography messes with your mind big time. It changes the way you look and treat other people. You can tell yourself, oh, but it's not hurting anybody. It's just me all by myself. <laughs> you are so wrong because it changes the way you will look at other people. It will change the way you look at other men, at other women, it will change you. It will. It feeds a part of you. It feeds that flesh in you. Scientists tell us that it sends serotonin into your brain at such a level that they're now saying it is equivalent to heroin. It's bad enough when you do it, but when a young child does it, you are, you are ruining, they are ruining their life, and they don't even, and, and they're not aware of it. My friends, if you are not taking steps to monitor this and to deal with this, heaven help us. Heaven help us. And not just for yourself, but for your family. Gotta, gotta keep, gotta, gotta be aware of this game. I am scared to death 
to think of where our nation is heading. The seeds we are sowing. You ain't seen nothing yet. Not when we have a whole society that's secretly being forced, or not even force fed, my gosh, we're doing it willingly. Polluting our minds. I, I, I am afraid for our nation. If you need help with this, I, I now some of you have been on, on Thursday nights, we've been doing the book of Acts, and we've seen some pretty scary things where like the apostles call people out by name. What if I called you out by name? You know, don't worry, I don't, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I don't have to do that because the Holy Spirit just did it in you. And if you need help with this, friend, you are foolish if you think you can do it by yourself. If you are serious about this and you want to change, I have resources for you. Do you realize you can actually stop? You can actually stop. But you have to ask for help. And you have to be willing to do what you need to do to change. Next word, uncleanness. Impurity of lustful living. Well, that's kind of what you feel like after what we've just been talking about, doesn't it? The word lewdness, the word means unbridled lust. Unbridled lust. I, and, I, and I am sorry if I'm, if I'm going to offend some of you. I don't mean to. I don't mean to be judgmental. But every time I see a commercial on TV for Las Vegas, it's that. That's what they're advertising. I know there's other things that people do in Las Vegas. I get it. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I get that. Carl's Jr. commercials. What are they selling? They're selling this. They're selling this. They hook you. This is where our world's going, friends. These are works of the flesh. The second category, we can call, we call it idolatrous. The next two things, there's idolatry, which is worship of false gods or, or idolatry. The next word, sorcery. The Greek word is pharmakia. I don't know if that sounds like anything to you. Pharmakia, pharmacy. Yeah, this is about drugs. This is about the use or administering of drugs. Ancients used to use drugs to create an altered state of mind. That's, that's kind of what it's all about. And friends, I'm not talking about the doctors giving you legal prescriptions. I'm talking about the illegal stuff. These are works of the flesh. Next category is relational. The first word here is hatred. Um, I got to tell you, some, sometimes some of us use this term. We say, well, I have righteous indignation. Danger, Will Robinson. There's a fine line between righteous indignation and hatred. Uh, hatred is a work of the flesh. Be careful. The next word, contentions. The Greek word, the word means contention, strife, wrangling. Okay, I'm going to offend more of you. I'm sorry. Oh gosh, equal equal opportunity offender. This person who's always getting into fights with others. If you are finding that you are at odds with more than one person, consider the possibility it's you. You tell me that it's everybody else, but when I see you fighting with one person after another, you have to consider the possibility that it's you. This is my flesh that does this, wanting to fight wanting to cause strife. We all need to do this. We all need to look in the mirror on these things. Jealousies. Uh, jealousy is jealousy. You know what jealousy is. Outbursts of wrath, anger, heat, anger boiling up and soon subsiding again. It's, it's the person who explodes in anger. Some of you do that. 
but you kind of forget because after the anger's gone, you forget about the fact that you just exploded on someone. I got news for you that people around you haven't forgotten. This is your flesh. Selfish ambitions. The word means electioneering or intriguing for office. It sounds like you can't be a candidate for an office, huh? It's more the idea of the person who's scheming to get ahead of others. You don't care who you climb over. This is selfish ambitions. It's actually a word that's related to the word for contentions. It's derived off of that same word. The word dissensions literally means twice standing. It's dividing people and putting into two, into two camps. It's making divisions in the body. Some of these words, the word for contentions, jealousies, and dissensions are the same Greek words that Paul uses to describe the carnal or the fleshly Corinthian church. Same words. Oh, shock. These things can be going on in church. Well, they're going on right now. Of course they are because we're human. We're fleshly. The word for heresies is also a relational word. It's not really about doctrine. The word heresies has to do with a difference of opinions, dividing people. It's, it has to do with dividing the church. The word envy, it's wanting what other people have. And sometimes we're even envious of the gifts other people have. Hey guys, I got you each a gift. No way, Jesus, why? Awesome. Well, I just love you guys, so I wanted to get you something. Oh, wow. <laughs> so nice. Laura, you first. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, will you look at this, a little eight ounce can of Coke? This is perfect for me. I looked everywhere to find a gift for you, and this just seemed to fit. I love it. <laughs> Drew, yeah, your turn. All right. <laughs> No way, Jesus. Seriously? Oh, yeah. 20 ounces of Coke? Yeah, baby. Woo! This is awesome. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much. You're welcome. Laura, we got to go show Richard our gifts. Come on. Okay. Hey, Laura, is there a problem? No. I mean, well, yeah, kind of. You know, it's just that every time you give people gifts, you always give everyone else more than you give me. What do you mean? I mean, like, I open my gift, and, oh, cute, eight ounces, and then Drew opens his gift, and hello, 20 ounces. Oh, I know what you mean. Well, that gift is for Drew. Uh, well, that's what I want. Uh, go get it for me. Okay, if that's what you want. Yeah. I got a liter! Oh. I know, it's one liter of God's sweet goodness. Jesus gave it to me. He did? Yes. <laughs> Okay, you know what? You're going to meet somebody with a bigger bottle, and you are going to be so mad. Who I check it out. I got an upgrade. Coke 3.0. That is awesome. I know. <laughs> well, isn't that just great? Yeah. Hey, Jesus, you rock. Yeah. Thanks, what Drew. What is wrong with you? <sighs> Why are you holding back your best from me? I gave you my best. Don't you see what's happening here? You're letting everyone else's gifts steal your joy. <sighs> No, Jesus, you are stealing my joy by giving everyone else more than you give me. Laura, I picked this gift out for you. That's what I wanted you to see. I don't care. Until you can look past this, all you're going to see is a can of Coke. Envy. Envy. Next word, murders, we get that. Murders means murders. Next category, we call it drunken. And that's the first word is drunkenness. The Greek word is mephe. Mephe. Does that sound like something? Of course it does. Guess where the word meth comes from? Drunkenness. Um, uh, the Bible doesn't condemn drinking alcohol. It does condemn drunkenness. And then the last word here is revelries, which is a drunken party. You get together with lots of people and you all get drunk. These are works of the flesh, my friends. And Paul ends by saying those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's pretty serious stuff. I remember years ago when I would teach this passage, I would like forget to say anything about that last phrase. Friends, there is a warning here. And you need to pay attention. Paul is saying is that if this is your, literally, your constant practice, those who practice such things, if this is your manner of life, then you are in danger. You are in danger of not going to heaven. 
Now, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, I got news for you. Your life is going to be nothing but this stuff because you won't have the ability to do anything but do these things. You're powerless to do that. That's what we all learned. God wants you to know that He loves you and He wants to help you out of this mess. God sent His Son for the very purpose of paying for your mess, dying in your place, and He rose again to show you that He's got the power to conquer this stuff. He's got the power to help you to change. And if you would make a choice today to turn around and just say, God, I need you, you know what? You can start having God's help with this stuff. It can change. It can change. Every one of these things can change. This is not, well, I was, I'm just Italian. I was just born that way. Oh, baloney. <laughs> I got, I got it's my Irish temper. No, it's not. It's your flesh. You can change. Absolutely you can change. Now, for those of you who have trusted in Jesus, you probably are a bit uncomfortable as we go through this. Because, friend, as I I reminded you, we all still have flesh. And we will all have, in some measure, we will still have these things. But these are what we grow in. This is what we grow out of. God doesn't want to leave you with this stuff. They will never completely go away. But God wants to help us through this. Now, there is another category. You might be what we would call a carnal, a fleshly believer. You went forward at a harvest crusade. You, you, you prayed a prayer with a friend, but your life hasn't changed. And in fact, that list is exactly who you are. I got news for you. You're, you're on notice today. God is giving you a warning. Now, I know some people who would say, well, never, you were never born again in the first place. I'm not going to argue with that. That might be the case. I've got other friends who would say, well, you've backslidden. And you're going to lose your salvation. And to be honest, I'm not going to argue with that either. And I'm not sure I can tell the difference. It really doesn't make a difference anyway. Because you're still in danger. And you need to address this. You need to change. Because you are in in danger of not inheriting the kingdom of God. Now when we walk in the Spirit... The Spirit will start doing things in us. And He produces what we call fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, our long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fruit isn't something that a vine has to work at. It just happens. So if you focus on walking in the Spirit... These things will start happening naturally. The first word is love, agape. That's that's one of our favorite words. It's unconditionally choosing to put value on another person. I I love to talk to, uh, uh, you know, couples who are thinking about getting married, and and we talk about this. There are lots of different kinds of love, but you want to make sure that you've at least got this kind of love in your relationship. That you make a choice. It's not about what you feel. It's about what you choose. And I choose to value you. I choose that if, if, I, if I had to sell you at a garage sale, I'd put like a billion dollar price tag on you. No, make it $10 billion. I'd make it a hundred billion, a gazillion billion. Because that's what agape is about. I, you are so important because I make a choice to put a value on you. It's loving the unlovable. When the Spirit is flowing in us, He teaches us how to love others like God loves us. Because that is exactly how He loves you. The next word is joy. Kara is the word. It means, it means joy or gladness. And i got to tell you, friends, joy is one of the chief characteristics that separates the Christian from the world. Sometimes Christians look like we've just been sucking a bunch of lemons. Oh, he must be a Christian. Because he's... No serious. I got news for you. That's not the way it works in my book. The Bible says that joy is one of the fruit of the Spirit. A Hindu trader in India once asked a missionary, what do you put on your face to make it shine? The missionary didn't know how to respond until he began to realize 
that the man was talking about his joy. And he explained to him, it's nothing I put on my face. It's what comes out of my heart. I remember one of the first trips we did in Russia, I was, it was somebody talked to one of the translators while we were on the bus. And I don't think, I don't remember us talking. You know, sometimes you can hear people talking on a bus and you can tell that they're, they aren't like us because they don't talk our language. But, but I don't think we were talking and they went up to the, they went up to the, uh, uh, went up to us or I can't remember, the, like, but I remember them saying, where are you from? You're not from here. And we were like, I don't know. How do you, why do you say that? Because you smile all the time. Joy. That's joy, beloved. Next word is uh, peace, Irene. Um, Irene. This is what Irene's name means, peace. It can be peace between people. It can be peace with God. It can be peace in my heart. It's the opposite, friends, of anxiety. Now, I don't got this one wired. I'm quite the anxious guy. I'm working on this. I'm praying for it every day. Pray for God's peace. And there are things you can do to grow in peace. Some of us, we spend our whole lives battling anxious thoughts. The Spirit wants to say, be still. Be at peace. Next word, long-suffering. Patience, endurance, slowness. Slowness in avenging wrongs has to do with patience with difficult people. A truck driver dropped in at an all-night restaurant in Broken Bow, Nebraska. The waitress had just served him when three swaggering, leather-jacketed Hell's Angels walk in. They were looking for a fight. One grabs his, the hamburger off of the trucker's plate. The other takes a handful of fries, and the third picks up his coffee and begins to drink it. The trucker did not respond as one might expect. Instead, he calmly rose, picked up his check, and he walked to the front of the room, put the check and his money in the cash register, and went out the door. The waitress followed him to put the money in the till and stood watching out the door as the big truck driver drove away into the night. When she returned, one of the bikers said to her, Well, he's not much of a man, is he? <laughs> R, R, R. No, he's a pirate instead of a biker. <laughs> he's a pirate biker. R, R, R. <laughs> not much of a man, is he? She replied, I can't answer about that, but he's also not much of a truck driver. He just ran over three motorcycles out in the parking lot. <laughs> well, maybe that isn't long-suffering. <laughs> not, like not like we thought it was. But it's putting up with difficult people. Kindness, crestates. Kindness, doing good things for others. Seventh grade this jumper made of? Naga hide. You let me go to school dressed like a seat cover. You convinced me that it was good for you. Oh, Edna. You know, I'm having this wedding here tomorrow, and your weeds are growing through the fence. Do you care? Think of your fellow man. Give I see some things haven't changed. Put a little love Why this to Edna? Why change into my garden clothes? Why me? And the world will be a better place. And the world. You're planning them too close together. Edna, it's going to be a beautiful wedding. Yeah, maybe. Patience. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Now, they were calling it patience, but I also see the kindness in it. They didn't just put up with her, they did something. Next word, goodness, agathosune. That's kind of the opposite of being impure or being filthy. If this is about being good. Good comes in your heart. Faithfulness, Greek word, can be translated faith. But in this context, this is talking about somebody who is reliable, someone you can count on. That's what the Spirit wants to produce in us. People that can be counted on. The next word is gentleness. The word means uh, mildness of disposition, gentleness of spirit, or meekness. doesn't mean weakness. This is a word used by the Greeks to describe when a wild horse is broken by a cowboy and he becomes gentle and, and, and not a threat at all. It's about strength under control. Years ago, there was a fellow named John Selwyn, he had become famous, actually, as a young man, as a boxer. 
He was a good boxer. This guy was ripped. But he was uh, touched by the Holy Spirit, and he becomes a missionary and goes off to the, to the islands to, to preach the gospel. And uh, one day, he, was, he had to pull one of the men in the church aside and to rebuke him. He lovingly rebuked him. But the man didn't like what, what he heard. And so he hauls out and punches John Selwyn in the face. You got to admit, you know, this would be like, like, you know, a prize fighter knocking a prize fighter in the face. And you're thinking, what an idiot. And John Selwyn ripped, puts his hands down, and turns his cheek and waits for the next punch. The fellow was torn. And he ran out. He, years later, came to know the Lord. And in those days, the custom was when you were baptized as a believer that you would take a new name, a Christian name. And this man said to the crowd, he said, I wish to be called John Selwyn because he's the one who taught me what Jesus Christ is really like. That's gentleness. And the last word is self-control. The word literally means power inside. It's the power inside you to do the right thing. The power to do good, the power to say no to the wrong. That's what the Spirit does in our lives. He gives us power. We've been talking a lot about the Holy Spirit. We've talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about the word Yield, because to me, I think that's so key in understanding that the power that's available happens when you yield, when you say yes, when you stop fighting. And every time you yield, friends, you take a step. What we're talking about today is the bigger picture is don't just stop with one step. Take many steps, one after another. There's a path ahead of you. God wants you to walk in the Spirit. And if you will walk in the Spirit, you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Let's stand and pray. So, Lord, I'd like to lift us all up to you. Lord, I'm, I, Lord, we all have wrinkles in our lives and need to be ironed out. We all have things that we need to be working on. We have areas that you want to challenge us and stretch us and grow us. Help us to take another step today. Help us to take a step of yielding to you again today just as I hope we will do as we walk out this door. Lord, we want to stop doing things so much our way. And we want to learn to do things more your way. Help us to walk. I would pray, Lord, for that person here. I don't know if there's anyone here who's never opened their heart to you for the first time. Friend, it, this is not that hard. You can start today and take your first step. Right where you are, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But I'm going to ask you to get serious with God. You can say something to Him. You need to say something to Him. And it needs to be something like this. You can pray with me. You can pray these words after me. But tell him, God, I need you. I need help. And I am willing to admit, I'm a sinner. I have screwed up. And I'm ready to turn around. And so, Lord, today I take a choice to turn around. And ask you for help. Would you forgive me? Would you come into my life? 
Would you help me as I learn what it is to follow you? And I thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name.